All right, welcome back. This is Bill from Lilac Writer, and I'm going to continue with the Persona Studio One project I started in the last screencast. And I did a little work here on this between videos and uh, organized it, and I got started and tried out a few other things. The main thing I did is I switched up the drums a little bit that you'll hear. I've now uh, broken out some of the uh, harmonica parts and just generally organized. I created a bit of an ending here. Okay, now the ending needs a little bit of work here because um, I just stuck some uh, pieces in here. We need to do fades. One of the things then that I hadn't really talked about, but I did, is um, doing fades is really easy in uh, Studio One because it uses the kind of the dynamic drag handles and uh, real-time crossfading. Sometimes you don't need to zoom in. I forget this, that the editor window is very helpful a lot of the time if you want to clean up these waveforms because you can leave this part zoomed in. I might want to put a little bit of a fade there in case there's a pop. And if I wanted to do a cross fade, I can just drag the two regions to overlap. Snap needs to be off to do this. And then just hit uh, X. And that's how you do a crossfade. And within the in the clip or the region, you can also lower the amplitude right here. So that makes a very handy way to make little adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead in here and clean this up a little bit for my ending. And uh, that this was just sort of uh, dropped in here. And then this is the guitar part. We'll just get that uh, lined up to the grid. And the in in other interesting thing is that this has got a bit of a swing to it. So I've set the grid to eighth notes with a 40% swing, which means that the um, each eighth note or the offbeats are delayed slightly, which is what swing is. And so when you've done that, then the grid and the snapping will reflect that swing level. So let me um, back up a little bit and hear this. One thing I was going to mention is that there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts in all of these programs. And since I'm just learning Studio One, I've created a key for myself. And I'm going to try to get this on the uh, webcam. And so you can see um, that I've basically taken two uh, note cards and written the keys on there. And there's a little bit of blue tape here holding it on. If you look under there, my two key shortcuts for Pro Tools, Slip and Grid, not to be confused now with Edit and Inspector. The other thing is the these keys here are the tool selectors. This is really right, um, if you look here, we've got the tools, but that maps exactly to the um, one through five keys here. So you'll see if I hit two, it selects the, um, you know, the marquee. And then here's the um, cutting tool, the eraser tool, the pencil tool, and the mute tool are all selected. So a lot of times when I'm editing, um, I'll select these right here. This is very natural if you ever spend any time in Cubase because it works just like that. And if you're down, if you ha have the focus in the editor window, it does the same thing again, but now it's selecting the tools for the editor. And I mentioned this in a previous video. When you get used to the workflow here, it's kind of nice to leave um, the tools that you need a little bit differently. Like you could leave snap off here and maybe leave the cutting tool on. The other thing with the cutting tool is that if you modify with the command key, it always flips back to the pointer tool. I think actually all the tools do that. Flips back to the, um, like if you have this uh, selector, you hold down the command, that would be control on a PC, and it switches to that. So I'll close that. Another keyboard shortcut that I just figured out is Option Z. Option Z will take, um, 
will basically zoom out to the extent of your project. Another handy shortcut is Z. Z will take you back to the previous zoom level. So some uh, handy things there. I want to show you just a little bit about some edits that I have done to the um, drum part. I've actually edited in some fills. And the way you do that is you find fill parts. And sometimes these are much shorter uh, clips. And basically to put a fill in, like say I wanted to actually have this fill here. Let's just listen to that. So here I'm just going to take a fill clip. Uh, I want snap on for this, which is the N keyboard shortcut. We'll just move that out of the way. I'm going to hit D to just give myself another one and you just drop it in there and adjust to fill up the hole. Very, very simple. All right, that's the section on fills. And I've also varied up and put different drum loops um, in on the different sections just to give it a little more variety. So there's something a little different going on in each of these times. And you can see that I've got the harmonica parts also um, going in here. Now, I think uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just play with the time stretching a little bit. If you hear the first time around, we've got a Dave's uh, harp is um, pretty laid back. I'm going to open the mixer to get a little bit more uh, volume out of this. So there's a space for guitar solo in there. But before I do that, now the second harmonica solo section got kind of a similar quality to it about the same timing so it got me thinking what can we do with studio one that would be interesting to add some variety to the second one and uh, so we're going to play with this time stretch on that and we need the inspector which is f4 on the keyboard and we're going to use the um, some of the time stretch settings and um, the first thing I need to do is set the file tempo in here. This was recorded at 120. So if the file tempo is not set when, you're saw, when your sound is playing back, this is one thing that you might not realize is when you click on a track, this inspector area here sets up um, some parameters for the track, like which layer you're on, if you want a track delay, and how you're going to... Um, change the timing of material if you're going to do time stretch or not. Currently, the track for the harp is set to drums. That's not really right. It's really more of a solo instrument. Because it's complex, I might set that to sound. Sound would be anything that's not a solo instrument or a drum. I can speed it up or slow it down on the individual region using the settings here. So these settings here are for the individual region. If I click on a different one, you'll see that that changes to this one. Looking back on harp, what we're going to do is just see what happens if we put in two and speed this up twice. This will speed it up without changing the uh, pitch. And so um, I just thought that was very interesting, the, um, the how clean that is. Let's, let's solo that up. And we're going twice as fast as the original tempo. I'll be back in a little bit with the next one where we record and then uh, start to put a get together a mix for this song. And we'll see you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.